it's Jay from Jay's Trains here and welcome to today's video. So first of all, I just wanted to say I'm sorry for getting this video out kind of late. Um, I know the catalog, um, you know, the new Lionel catalog has already been out for at least over a week at this point, but uh, you know, life has just been busy and I've, I made the catalog review a few days ago, but life just kind of got busy for a few days and I didn't really have the time to sit down and actually edit this video together. So. I'm kind of making this part um, as an after the fact, and uh, I've even gone back and tweeted some of my uh, thoughts about certain pages. Um, you know, I really wanted to get this catalog review out though, because it was a, the 2024 catalog was really good. There was a lot of uh, really nice stuff in there, and uh, I kind of changed my opinion on some things. You know, when I first flipped through it, I was like, you know, that's nice, but I, I don't know if I would go for it. But some things have kind of grown on me, so um, kind of changed my mind on what I might be pre-ordering a little bit but uh, anyway it's just been a really good catalog and uh, something else I wanted to include in the beginning of this video as well is uh, I actually never got around to making a video on what I got for Christmas of 2023 so I'll just include like a brief um, kind of sneak peek at that and then I'll make separate running videos for those items but uh, yeah so with that being said let's go ahead and get on to this video. All right guys, so here we go with the Christmas 2023 train haul. And as you can see, it was a very Norfolk and Western themed Christmas this year, <laughs> but a lot of really nice stuff. Starting off, we have a Lino Vision Line Class A. This is the 1238 with the uh, tender without coal bunker extensions, as well as the roller bearing rods on the locomotive. Very beautiful engine. Next, we have a five car set of Norfolk and Western Premier uh, passenger cars and this set was made back in 2015 but it was pretty much in new condition which is awesome the only problem i had was the uh, roller on this truck here on the observation was actually broken but that was pretty easy to take out you know you just take the uh, shell off and then once the shell is off then you can undo the screw that holds the truck onto the frame and then the uh, roller assemblies just pop right out um, after disconnecting some wires to them but it's not that difficult to do so eventually at some point I'll get a replacement roller for that but for the time being the roller on the back truck there um, does the job pretty good so eventually yeah I'll get the roller for that but really beautiful passenger set and then also last but not least we have an MTH Premier Norfolk and Western GP9 this is the 521 which just so happens to be the engine that uh, is currently at the Virginia Museum of Transportation in Roanoke so I've been interested in getting one of these for a while. Um, I think these came out like two years ago, but I uh, really wanted to have one of these Redbirds in the uh, BMW fleet. So glad to finally have one of these. It sounds great and runs great. So happy to have it. But there it is guys. The quick sneak peek at the 2023 Christmas haul. Um, like I said, at some point I'll get around to making uh, two uh, videos about these, you know, one about the 1238 and then the other about the GP9 and then I'll probably have the cars in that as well. But uh, yeah, so really happy with this stuff. And uh, with that being said, let's go ahead and get into the catalog review. All right, guys. So this has been a great catalog to start off 2024 with um, lots of really nice things in here. Uh, definitely a very expensive catalog as well, <laughs> but uh Lots of great offerings in it, and, uh, you know, I know there are a few things in here that I'm going to want to pre-order. Uh, I'm not going to be going through the entire catalog in this video. I'm just going to be focusing on the scale, um, locomotives, and rolling stock. But um, there's definitely a lot of Line Chief and uh, traditional stuff in here for people who are, you know, collect those kind of things. So I'm not going to be spending too, too much time on everything, um, but we're just going to try and get through the catalog pretty quickly here. I'll just be giving my thoughts here. Um, so starting off right in the beginning of the catalog, we have the Vision Line Triple X locomotives. Um, you know, I already made a video about these a couple of months ago, so if you want to see that, just uh, go ahead and scroll back a few videos and you'll come across the video I made. But uh, one thing worth mentioning is there are a few really nice um, custom runs that uh, Lionel is doing of these with Brady's Trains, Mr. Muffins, and the Train Loft. Um, Brady's Trains has a really nice Pennsylvania Railroad version. Um, the Train Loft has two NW versions, one with a Tuscan colored boiler and one with a Pevlar blue colored boiler. And then uh, Mr. Muffins Trains is doing a Army Green World War II version. So uh, definitely check those out because those are some really nice models and those are going to be collectible down the road. So going on to the first legacy steam locomotive offering in this catalog as a return of the 284 Berkshires. 
been quite a while since Lionel has done these, and uh, if I'm not mistaken, I believe this is the first time that Whistlesteen is actually going to be included in these, so that's going to be an awesome feature. By the way, we have three nickel plate Berkshires on the first page, the 755, of course the 765, and a really nice fantasy scheme down there, the 777, the nickel plate limited. Um, that scheme looks absolutely gorgeous on that locomotive, so right away I think that's going to be a pre-order of mine there. Um, I know a lot of the really nice fantasy schemes are uh, usually become pretty collectible. I mean, just looking at the uh, the CNO 484s that were offered uh, last year, I believe. Um, the Chessy scheme, I know that's a really sought after one right now, so this is going to be a really hot locomotive. I I make I can make a prediction for that, so uh, I think that's going to be a definite pre-order for me though. You know, it it looks absolutely gorgeous. On the next page, we have a CNO twenty seven sixteen, which is actually just the seven sixty five that was masquerading as the um, as a Chesapeake and Ohio Kanawha. Um, I believe that was back in the early nineties. So we have that. I am surprised though Lionel didn't do a twenty seven sixteen with that locomotive being restored in Kentucky right now. Um, I'm kind of surprised at that, and I haven't heard yet if anybody's going to be doing a custom run of those. Hopefully somebody will, because that would be a really good seller as well. Um, we also have a DTNI locomotive, and below that we have a return of the Paramarquette number 1225. I know a lot of people are going to be happy with that being offered again, um, especially since that's the locomotive that the Polar Express locomotive in the movie is based off of. So these engines, MSRP is $1699, so right around $1700. But if you go through a good Lionel dealer, um, you'll probably get a good discount. I, I already see a bunch of uh, dealers have these for around $1500. So really nice locomotives and uh, glad to see these back in the catalog for sure. So next up we have the big steam offering for this catalog and it's a return of the legacy CNO H7 locomotives. Um, right away on the first page, we have four different Chesapeake and Ohio versions. Um, three of them with Vandy tenders and one with a regular. On the next page, we have a Rio Grande rf &P, and then two Union Pacific versions. The Rio Grande version, um, I believe, is kind of sort of a fantasy scheme. Although uh, the Rio Grande did have 2882s in real life, um, they kind of look different than the H7s, though. So that's why I say it's kind of sort of a fantasy scheme. It would have been really nice had Lionel done the Rio Grande version though with a green boiler because um, I'm pretty sure I've seen pictures of uh, Rio Grande 2882s with green boilers on them. And that would have been a real standout on uh, these pages with what otherwise is pretty much all black locomotives. But uh, you know, honestly in a way it's kind of good because I, <laughs> I don't need anything else from this catalog tempting me. And uh, that would have been a real temptation had it been like that. but. Um, it's still a really nice locomotive with the uh, white trimming on the engine and the white wall um, drivers and wheels on the locomotive and tender. By the way, though, um, you can see that these locomotives are uh, around $2,000. But if you go through a good Lionel dealer, you'll get a bit of a discount. I've seen a few dealers have these for around $1,750 to $1,800. Um, still pretty expensive. But uh, if if I ever did get one of these, I'd probably go for the uh, CNO version with the long bandy tender there the 1553 um but at the moment i don't believe i'm going to be pre-ordering any of these still they're really nice locomotives though next up we have a return of the legacy 46010 wheelers we have a new jersey central a new york central and hudson river a western pacific a new york central as well as a northern pacific on these first pages and flipping the page um there's an offering of a really nice b and o royal blue line set you have a really nice locomotive there on the top, and then you have three different two-car um, woodside sets that you can get to go along with that locomotive. And uh, what's nice about this is pretty much anybody with a small layout would be able to run these. Um, the locomotives have a minimum radius of 031 curves. The passenger cars do have a radius, um, you know, kind of a minimum radius of 042 though. But um, you know, pretty much most small layouts would be able to, uh, you know, run this. So. It would be a really nice um, set all combined. It's kind of a turn of the century set. And something worth noting, I think, that uh, I think is pretty cool that Lionel has done to kind of modify tooling on these, is uh, some of these cars have kind of um, semi-enclosed vestibules on the ends, so that's a little something different with these. The locomotives are right around $800 in the catalog, but if you go through a good Lionel dealer, you should be able to get a, a good discount. 
um, you know, a few of the dealers I've seen already that are offering these for pre-orders um, are right around seven hundred dollars, some even six fifty. All right, so next up here in the next several pages, we have probably what is the number one announcement from this catalog, and that's a return of the Milwaukee Road Hiawatha locomotive and passenger cars, and also a return of the extruded aluminum 18-inch passenger cars, which is good to see them again, since Lionel said that they would actually never do them again. But uh, this is the first time, um, I believe the last time that these locomotives were offered was back in 2006. And uh, those locomotives back then were just TMCC. So it's been quite a while since the Hiawatha has last been featured in the catalog. And there are several different um, Milwaukee Road variations, including an LCCA um, exclusive locomotive on the first page. But uh, a couple of different Milwaukee Road schemes, along with uh, the passenger car sets, a couple of different schemes for those. You also have a couple of different fantasy sets, one being a Chicago and Northwestern a Seaboard line, as well as a Union Pacific 49er set. And uh, along with the Hiawatha um, locomotive and cars, I'm predicting the 49er, um, especially the passenger cars in particular, are going to be pretty sought after. Um, just because with all of the previous uh, fantasy runs that Lionel has done of the 49er scheme, um, you had two different challengers that they did, um, I believe an ES44 um, they did in a 49er scheme and then also coming out in the next couple of months you have the uh, 49er scheme with the UP 484 Northerns. So the passenger cars I predict are going to be pretty hot sellers um, in a 49er scheme here just because they can go along with all the other uh, previous releases um, with that. Now getting the sets with the locomotive and the two different passenger sets all together uh, it's going to be pretty pricey. The locomotives are around $1,200, and then you have the three-car set, which is around $900, and then you also have the four-car set, which is $1,400, which is pretty steep. Um, you know, you can probably get some good um, discounts going through Lionel dealers, but uh, altogether, you know, they'll be really nice sets. I'm not going to be going for one of these. I'm not really a Milwaukee Road guy, and for the price tag that comes along with having these, I'm kind of glad I'm not. <laughs> but um, yeah, these are some really nice sets, and I know everybody's been really excited about them. Um, yeah, the price tags though, geez. But um, you know, it's definitely going to be nice to see some videos of these running, and uh, especially once the uh, locomotives and the cars are all combined together, those are going to be pretty sharp. Okay, so getting into the diesel category of this catalog, the first up item that we have is some really nice legacy GP9s and uh, lots of great different schemes here. You have the Minneapolis and St. Louis, Norfolk and Western, Pennsylvania Railroad with a super base B unit as well as some nice Banger and Rusick units there. On the next page, we have three different Conrail units, again one of them being a super base and two Union Pacific units. Um, the MSRP on these is right around $600, um, but again, if you look around a little bit, you should be able to find a dealer that have these for somewhere probably more toward $500. Um, out of these, probably the Norfolk and Western units um, would be the ones that I would go for. On the next few pages, we have a return of the ES44s, and uh, the first pages here, we have some pretty typical um, road names. We have BNSF, Canadian Pacific, CSX, Norfolk Southern, and Union Pacific. Um, in these offerings, there are two powered units along with the super base unit. The powered units are 750 and the super base units are around 600. And um, I gotta say, it's really nice to see the Canadian Pacific units um, make an appearance here because the last time Lionel did these was their Vision Line release um, many, many years ago. And I've kind of been waiting for Lionel to do these again. And uh, I don't know, I might consider picking up some of those Canadian Pacific units. They're pretty nice. The next ES44 offerings are some Norfolk Southern Heritage units. We have the Central of Georgia, Lehigh Valley, Mongahalia, Norfolk and Western, and the Pennsylvania. Um, with these units, you only have the one powered unit and then a non-powered unit with the same cab number. The uh, powered unit, again, puts you back 750, and then the non-powered units are $430. And then finally we have what is probably the biggest talk of all the ES44s in the catalog and that's the CSX Heritage units. Um, right here they only have five of them because uh, by the time the catalog came out the uh, next few that CSX made weren't uh, officially announced yet. So right here we have the B&O um, Heritage unit, the Conrail Heritage unit, the Chessie System, Seaboard, and Chesapeake in Ohio. 
Um, I gotta say, out of all of these, um, the Seaboard and the Chesapeake in Ohio kind of stand out to me the most. Um, again, these are one single-powered unit and then a non-powered unit with uh, pretty much the same road number as the uh, powered units. So you could get a powered unit and a, a non-powered unit to put in the consist in this way. With a non-powered unit, oh, it would save you a little bit of money. Next up, we have some Legacy SD45s. And again, these are two powered units as well as a super base unit. Um, you have the Santa Fe, the Delaware and Hudson, Rio Grande, Redding, Frisco, and Southern Pacific. The MSRP for the powered units are $649.99 and the super base B units are $599. And then flipping over to the next page, we have some really nice Legacy E6 units. We have the Baltimore and Ohio, um, a really nice General Motors set um, that actually, with the second A unit as well as a Super Base B unit, um, actually have clear shells on them. So in real life, apparently, um, there were some demonstrator units that had uh, apparently a see-through side where you could see the motors and such in them. But uh, with these ones, they have clear sides so that you can see the electronics in them. So. Those would definitely be something that would stand out in a collection. Um, then also on the other page, you have the Southern and Milwaukee Road units that could actually go with um, the Milwaukee Road um, passenger cars offered earlier in the catalog. Now, as you may have noticed on this page, um, there is something that says that these units have optional fixed front pilots. Um, that goes for all the E6s in this catalog, apparently. I'm not completely sure exactly what that means. I'm going to have to uh, look into it a little bit. I'm pretty sure on the catalog review that Ryan Kunkel and Dave Olson did, they probably explain it, so I'll have to check that out. But if you've already seen that or you know what it is, feel free to comment that down below. Um, the AA sets of these MSRP costs uh, $1,200, and then the Super Base B units are $500. Continuing with the E6s, on the next page we have an AA set of Rock Island units along with a Super Base B unit and an AB set of uh, City of San Francisco units with a super base unit to go along with those. Um, also, you may have noticed on the previous page there were, um, I should note, two AB unit sets as well. Uh, on the opposite page, you also have some Rock Island Al Capone uh, passenger coaches. It's a four car set to go along with the Rock Island units here, and uh, that right there will set you back $1,000. And then finally on the next page we have some really nice CB and Q units here. Um, these are technically E6 units, but if you look at the descriptions for these, um, these are actually called E5 units. Um, you have a really nice AB set there up top, a Super Base B unit, and then you have a bunch of matching cars to go along with the uh, engines here. A four uh, car set, a Station Sounds Diner, and a two car set of 21 inch passenger cars. Next up, we have some Legacy SW8 diesel switchers. Um, we have a Detroit and Edison, Erie Lackawanna, Reading and Northern, Texas and Pacific, US Air Force, and Chicago Northwestern. These are pretty small units, so again, if you have a small layout, these would be right at home, um, being able to operate in 031 curves, and the MSRP for these is 550. So turning to the next page, we have the final offering of Legacy diesel locomotives in this catalog. You have the Conrail, LNN, Pennsylvania, Penn Central, Southern Pacific, Union Pacific, and Seaboard. There are two uh, different road numbers that are powered units offered in this run, and uh, MSRP for these is $649.99, so around $650. Also, a, a custom run to check out from PGH Train Fanatic through Mr. Muffins is a Pittsburgh and Lake Erie, and uh, I saw Nick make a post about that on Facebook, and uh, the concept art for that is pretty sweet. Okay, so here we go with one of the uh, first offerings of really nice sets in this catalog. It's a Nickel Plate Fast Freight Legacy set. In the set, you get the Nickel Plate 779 Berkshire, a Vision Lion stock car with quillable pig sounds, a uh, Hotbox Reefer, which we'll get into a little bit um, in the next few pages, a flat car with two Nickel Plate trailers, a PS1 box car, and a Vision Caboose um, that has its own crew talk and a uh, whistle. MSRP for this set is $24.99, so basically $2,500, but I've seen a few stores, um, Lionel dealers, have this set for between $21 and $2,200 for pre-order. But, uh, you know, it's a little pricey, but you get a lot of nice stuff in this set for sure. Okay, so here on the next page we have a really interesting new set that is the Atomic Energy Commission Glow in the Dark Scale Legacy set. And uh, this is actually something... Um, that pay, kind of pays tribute to um, some 
Atomic Energy Commission things that came out in the early 2000s that were traditional. And uh, this set is going to be awesome because it has glow-in-the-dark paint on everything in the set. And in the set you get a GP9 a gondola with nuclear waste containers, a Freight Sounds boxcar that not only has normal Freight Sounds but also um, Geiger counter clicks, a tank car, and then a bay window caboose, and you also have a super base B unit to add to the set if you'd like as well. MSRP for the set is $9.99, so around $1,000, and then the super base B unit is uh, around $500. Altogether, though, with the glow-in-the-dark paint, this is going to be a really awesome set. I mean, <laughs> this thing looks awesome, and uh, I might actually have to go for one of these. I mean, this is going to be a really hot-selling set, I think. Next up, in terms of sets, we have the Illinois Central City of Miami Legacy set. And in the set, you get an E6 unit and four passenger cars. You can also get a two-pack of passenger cars as well as a Station Sound Steiner to go along with this uh, really nice set. The set itself is uh, around $1,500, and the two-car set and the Station Sounds cars are $500 and $450, respectively. Alright, so flipping the page, we get into some of the rolling stock offerings in this catalog. On the first page, we have two different two-car sets of uh, Woodside coaches. The first being a New York Central, and the second being a Pennsylvania set. On the second page there, we have some, um, what I believe is the first time Lionel has ever done scale Looney Tunes themed uh, cars. And uh, I gotta say, that's pretty cool that <laughs> Lionel's actually doing that. I mean, I grew up watching Looney Tunes as a kid, so it would be pretty cool to have some scale Looney Tunes things to have on, you know, the layout. I mean, come on, who doesn't want to have some Acme loads being transported behind their engines? <laughs> so that's pretty cool. Okay, so now here we get to the all-new offering of Hot Box Reefers, which I'm pretty excited about. I mean, Lionel only did these as traditional cars in the past, I think like the mid to late 2000s. And uh, I always wondered why they never did scale versions of these, because I always thought it would be cool to have these on a train. And, uh, you know, here they are, they finally did them. So you have the Santa Fe, Fruit Grows Express, MDT, which is basically New York Central, and then the Pacific Fruit Express on the bottom there. I have a ton of uh, Pacific Fruit Express reefers, so I'll probably end up going for that. Um, you have a flickering light underneath the truck there with smoke as well, um, and all sorts of different sounds to simulate a hot box in the car and uh, having that changed out and stuff like that. So these are going to be some really cool cars, and I'm looking forward to uh, seeing some product demonstrations of them. Also on the next page there, uh, we have some milk cars, which actually Lionel I don't think has done quite a while. Um, I think the Strasburg one there is probably going to end up being a good seller. These next few pages here, I'm just going to go through kind of quickly. Um, we have some Union Pacific World War II items, a bunch of box cars, a CA-1 caboose, as well as a Freight Sounds Union Pacific box car right there. On the next page, we have some Freight Sounds PS-1 box cars. You have the Chessie System, Burlington, Delaware, Lackawanna, and Western, Great Northern, Illinois Central, and the rf &P right there, which is a pretty uh, nice looking car. On the next uh, page, we have some 8,000 gallon tank cars, as well as some flat cars with different um, colored trailers on them. The next page following that, we have some PS2 covered hoppers, and the opposite page is something pretty cool, is actually some uh, pre-weathered um, covered box, or not box cars, excuse me, <laughs> covered hoppers. So if you wanted to uh, get some stuff pre-weathered to put in your layout, you know, Lionel's making that available now. Next up, we have some more CA-1 cabooses. Um, up top, we have a Northern Pacific caboose, three different Union Pacific cabooses, and then at the bottom there, a Western Pacific caboose. And then on the opposite page, we have some Pensy style N6B Woodside cabooses, four of which are normal cabooses, the Delaware and Hudson, DT&I, Lionel Lines, and the Strasburg caboose there with the uh, yellow egg logo. And the two at the bottom are Vision Line cabooses, so with those, you have the Electrocoupler, Crew Talk, as well as a, a Quillable Air Whistle. On the next couple pages, we have a couple different road numbers for different road names of steel side box cars as well as wood side reefers. And then on the next page after that, we have some 50 foot tank cars, um, four different um, road names for those ADM, BNSF, Cargill, and GATX. The uh, tank cars are available in a three pack as well as an individually um, numbered car. And on the page following that, we have some coal hoppers. Now with these two bay AAR hoppers, you have uh, three different um, offerings of these basically. You have two different three car sets as well as an individually numbered car. Um, the first road name there being the Chesapeake in Ohio, which you can add to your H7s earlier in the catalog if you pre-order one of those. 
some Erie hoppers to go along with the Erie triplexes, some nickel plate um, hoppers to go along with the Berkshires, and last but not least, some Milwaukee Road hoppers at the bottom there. So here we have some more glow-in-the-dark um, items for anybody who collects Halloween-themed stuff. Um, on the first page, we have three different two-car passenger sets, the wood sidecars. Um, these are all glow-in-the-dark, and I believe they have ghost silhouettes in the window, too, so that's pretty spooky. <laughs> also, we have uh, a Dr. Dracula's blood, you know, milk car there. And uh, I don't believe that one has glow-in-the-dark paint, but the caboose there in the bottom does. So if anybody ordered the... Uh, Halloween themed triplex, you know, these would be some really great things to add to that. Okay, so here we go with the final section of the catalog that I'm going to be talking about in this video, and that's the 20th anniversary of the Polar Express as well as the Christmas section. And the biggest thing on the first page here that we see is the 20th anniversary scale set. It comes with a really nice maroon painted Berkshire along with three passenger cars. Um, up on the top of the opposite page, you also have a 20th anniversary coach which you can get separately to go with this set as well as a 20th anniversary boxcar and a sound boxcar, which has bell sounds in it. The set is an MSRP of right at $2,400, but uh, if you go, again, if you go through a good Lionel dealer, you'll probably get a discount um, on this. But, um, you know, with this set, it's gonna be really cool to see what the uh, art for the box of the set itself is gonna be. So that's gonna be a really nice collector's set down the road that uh, I think will be pretty collectible. And if you don't uh, want to get the set on the next page there, you have the Berkshires available for separate sale as well. Um, you have the black Berkshire from the movie, the red Berkshire as well as available separately from the set. And something that's really cool, which is a plasma painted um, Polar Express Berkshire, which is only gonna be available through the uh, Lionel store. And uh, with this plasma paint, depending on how you look at the engine, it'll turn between blue and red. So that's gonna be amazing to see. Um, MSRP for these is $1,700, but if you go through a good line L dealer, again, you know, you'll get a bit of a discount on the black and red Berkshire. Um, unfortunately, with the plasma coated Berkshire being available through the Lionel store website, you know, you're going to pay full retail on that. And uh, Lionel doesn't do a order now and pay later with pre-orders, so if you pre-order one of these at the time of pre-order, you're going to have to pay that full $1,700. But uh, that's definitely going to be a really nice collector's piece down the road. And uh, I have no doubt that the plasma code in that is going to be absolutely beautiful. Also, with the Berkshires being available uh, for separate purchase, you have the passenger cars being offered again. Um, you have the newly tooled observation cars, which uh, from what I understand, the new tooling on these is the ladders that you can see at the uh, very ends of the cars that in the movie, you know, the hero boy climbs up when the conductor takes the girl on top of the train before uh, the hero boy runs into the hobo. <laughs> but, um, so that's pretty cool to have that detail added to these cars. You have a uh, snow roofed car as well as a black roofed car for if you, you know, have gotten previous runs of cars with the, uh, you know, without the snow feature on the roof. And then you also have um, all the different cars down below there available for separate purchase as well. Next up, we have a really nice Christmas theme set based off of the Milwaukee Road Hiawatha sets offered earlier on in the catalog. And this is a North Pole Central Reindeer Road set. Basically, um, it's the North Pole Central number 12 offered at the top there, as well as a three car set and four car set of passenger cars to go along with the locomotive at the bottom of the page there. Um, you know, the MSRPs for these are the same as the Milwaukee Road versions earlier on in the catalog, so. It's going to be a very expensive um, Christmas set, but you know if you really like collecting these, uh, you know, nicely painted Christmas sets, you know, like if you like to have them run underneath the tree every single year, this is definitely going to be a really nice set and uh, probably a collectible set to get as well. Turning the page, we have one of the final scale offerings in the catalog, and it's the North Pole Central Cocoa Milk Train Legacy Set. And in the set, you get a uh, green, red, and uh, it looks like either silver or white color 10-wheeler there, along with two milk cars and a wood-sided combine coach on the end there. Um, also on the same page, you also have a uh, Christmas eggnog milk car, a flat car with two 20-foot trailers um, named Deer Dash, <laughs> kind of a uh, play on Door Dash there as well as a wood side caboose that you could add onto the set if you wanted as well, or any other Christmas themed things that you have. The set itself has an MSRP of $1,200, but if you go through a good line, uh, Lionel dealer, once again, 
you know, you can get a good discount on this. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I've seen this set for pre-order around a thousand dollars. So, you know, if you want a nice legacy set to have underneath the Christmas tree or in a Christmas display, you know, this is probably the way to go. All right, guys. So that's going to do it for this catalog review. How'd you guys like this catalog? Did you like it? Are you going to be pre-ordering anything from it? Let me know in the comments down below. I know for me, there are quite a few things that uh, I'm going to be considering pre-ordering for sure. In particular, the Triple uh, Seven Nickel Plate Limited Berkshire, as well as the two um, NWGP nines in this catalog. Um, anything other than that, um, <laughs> it's going to be a little bit out of my budget, I think, at this point. But uh, definitely a lot of really nice things in this catalog to consider. And uh, I don't know, I might even see if I can get the money together for that Atomic Energy Commission set. That thing looks pretty cool, especially with the uh, glow in the dark paint. But that's going to do it for today's video, guys. Hope you guys liked the video. If you did like it, please hit that like button. I would really appreciate it. And also, if you could, hit that subscribe button as well. This is Jay from Jay's Train signing out. I will see you guys next time.